Sweeten up your skillet with these maple blueberry breakfast sausage. Today I'm making maple blueberry breakfast sausage. I'm going to use our number 274 maple sausage seasoning. And for our meat block, I'm gonna use pork, pork butt specifically, as well as some cured and smoked bacon. Finally, I'm gonna add some dried blueberries for an extra pop of sweetness. Let me show you how I got here. And for this recipe, I'm going to be using a pork shoulder or a pork butt, however you wanna call it. Uh, this cut is pretty readily available at most supermarkets, and you can see the fat cap on here lends itself really well to sausage. Uh, the fat to protein ratio is about that 15 to 20 percent, which we're looking for. And the, all this fat here, that's flavor, and that's going to keep our sausage from drying out. So I'm going to work on getting the bone out of here. I also have a little bit of pork trim from a previous recipe, and then we'll be ready to grind. Now we want to get a good chill on this before we start grinding so we don't get any smearing. We're going to throw this in the freezer for about half an hour, 40 minutes, and then we'll get a nice little crust on it and we'll be ready to set up our grinder and go for our first grind. We got a really nice chill on our meat block here. You can tell that it's nice and firm and that'll help avoid any smearing as we go through the grinding process. I also did put our grinder parts in the freezer for about 45 minutes before we get started here. We're ready to grind and we're going to start with a 3 8 inch grind. This is going to be a standard two stage grind. So after this first one, we're going to switch out our plate to a 3 16 and we'll be ready for our second grind. Load up the hopper here. And recently one of my favorite things to add to any sausage is bacon. You can grind it right into your meat block along with your other pork or beef or whatever you got and it adds a really nice smoky, sweet, salty flavor. Now, with our breakfast sausage that we're making today, I couldn't think of a better meat block inclusion than this hearty, thick cut smoked bacon. It's gonna add a lot of flavor to our final product. And I'm just gonna grind it right in with our meat block. All right, it's time to switch out our plate to a 3 16 for our second grind. And finally, some ice to get as much of that meat block out of the auger as we can. For our sausage, we're gonna be using our 274 maple sausage seasoning. This is obviously gonna play well in a breakfast sausage because of those sweet maple notes, but it's also gonna have the spices and the salts that we like to see as well. Now, I have a 15 pound meat block here, and this is designed for 25 pounds of meat. 15 pounds divided by 25 pounds is about 60%, so I'm gonna weigh out 60% of our seasoning and we'll get to mixing. We'll gently sprinkle that in there. We've got about a cup and a half of cold distilled water as well. Now that water will help keep a little bit of moisture into our sausage, but it's also going to help distribute our seasoning really well throughout our meat block. I can feel our meat block starting to get just a little bit tacky, which means our protein extraction is starting to take hold and we're almost done mixing. So at this point, I want to add in our final inclusion, which is going to be some dried blueberries. Now our inclusion rate with the blueberries is going to be about 10%. So I've got eight ounce packages. And I'm gonna dump these in and continue mixing. I think these dried blueberries are gonna kinda pull some of those fats from the pork and retain that moisture in the sausage really nicely. These blueberries are gonna be a really cool color inclusion to our sausage here. Obviously blueberries go great with breakfast foods and the bacon, so we're just layering those breakfast flavors all into one sausage here. So I'm really excited to see how this tastes. These blueberries look pretty well mixed in. The protein extraction is pretty well there. So I think I'm gonna let this sit for about 10 minutes while I get my sausage stuffer set up. We'll be ready to case. Here I have our stuffer set up with our smaller sized horn, in this case a 7 8 inch horn. Our meat block is not gonna fit all in at once, so I'm gonna break this into two batches, load it up, we'll stuff, and then we'll go for our second round. 
Same with any sausage, we want to start pushing our meat block down in the middle of the hopper here and working it out toward the walls. That way that'll hopefully push out and eliminate as many air pockets as possible. We're gonna crank down our stuffer. We're gonna pull the meat block into the horn about 90% and then we're gonna back off the pressure. That way once the casings are on, we'll be ready to stuff right away. For our casings today, we're gonna be using a natural sheep casing. 20 to 22 millimeter size, which is gonna be really classic for our breakfast sausage. Open her up and then we're gonna get some water going through our casing. That'll help lubricate the casing to go onto the horn. It'll give it one final rinse and it'll just pull through as you're loading it onto the horn. So you get a little water pocket in there. Move up your horn with a little bit of water. We're ready to start loading on our casings. Guide with one hand, pull on with the other. You can see that water going through the casing, giving us our final rinse. As you can see, that water also helps untangle the casing as you start loading it on. All right, so we're going to leave a little extra right there just so we can have something to tie. And we're ready to start stuffing. And this part takes practice. You just got to get an even pressure on the crank here and then an even pressure with your left hand as well to make sure that casing is feeding off the horn well and we're getting nice consistent sausage. This way you can avoid air pockets, you can avoid overstuffing. But again, just like anything, it takes a little bit of practice to get it nice and consistent. We've got our breakfast sausage all cased up, so I'm going to break down the stuffer and then we can start linking. Now a little trick that I learned when linking up breakfast sausages is to get rid of some of those air pockets before you link them up. Natural sheep casings are much thinner than hog casings that you would use in a brat or other sausages and they have a tendency to break or burst a little easier. So by eliminating those air pockets we can avoid some of that bursting while we're linking up. Now you don't have to go crazy but if you see some air pockets just give them a quick poke, kind of work that out a little bit and hopefully we can avoid some of that bursting during the linking process. Now we're ready to link. We're going to go for about four, maybe five inches on these, and it's the same as you would any other sausage. Pinch, skip, pinch, and twist. Pinch, skip, pinch, twist. We are cased and linked up and we are ready to try this. I'm going to have a few fried up in a pan while I backpack and save the rest. These fried up beautifully. I brought them up to 160 degrees internal temperature and now I'm really excited to try these. I really like how you can see the blueberries through the casings already and I'm excited to see how that plays. Look at those blueberries mixed right in there. They did pull some of that fat so they're not as dry as before. The blueberries give this sausage a really nice sweet pop, but our 274 maple sausage seasoning is a really good balance of salty and sweet, those classic maple breakfast flavors that lend themselves really well to this final product. I just want to cut one of these open so you can kind of see the blueberries in there because it is really quite cool. Just look at all those blueberries in there. Now every time you bite into one of those, you're going to get like a nice sweet fruity, fruity bite in there. It's going to be absolutely delicious. I think one of the coolest things about making a breakfast sausage like this is it's going to be hard to go back to store-bought breakfast sausage. It's so juicy and so tender and you kind of realize that those frozen packages that you get from the store just won't cut it anymore. If you like this recipe or if you're curious about any of the ingredients I use, head to psseasoning.com. You can also follow us on all forms of social media. And until next time, I'm Chef Jed. Thanks for watching.